underscores. You know, I love going to restaurants downtown, turning your frown around, and like everybody, falls countdown. <laughs> hey, I'm ready to crumb up. Now let's watch a full-length Welcome to LWA FLM OIT. Let's watch a full length movie on YouTube with Mike Spiegelman and Carl. Hi, Carl. How are you, man? Hey, Mike. Good to see you. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing well. You Thank you. Yeah. Huh. Huh. yeah. You got hmm. bought a new comb, I see. Looking good. I, full disclosure, I have not cut my hair all summer and I'm <laughs> <laughs> just letting it go. Uh, you can see it right now on YouTube. Uh, it, well, eventually. Let me Not tell you, right. we are streaming right now on mutinyradio.fm, our favorite place to stream first. We do this every Sunday, 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, following Bound Round Sound. No, Moscato, is that the show? Bound Round one? Sound. Bound Round the other Sound, Moscato. Wax a Wax. What's the other one? It's a cool name, too. It was like Flat, pla flat, flat Plastic. Yeah, that's a flat. reference to a record. Right, and, and so, so is Bound Round Sound. That's right. a record. Mm -hmm. You spin me right. Anyway, I'm welcome round. to the show. We're going to watch a full length down. movie on YouTube. We want you to watch the video and listen to the podcast at the same time. We stream first on Mini Radio. Sunday is 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We are a podcast and a video podcast on YouTube. You can find us on your podcast service at L W A F L M O Y T. Same acronym for YouTube. -y. So, Carl, what is the movie we were watching this week? Well, this week we will watch Bucket of Blood 1959. Bucket of Blood. I'm not typing that. Yes. The channel, you can speech to text it. The channel we like is called Lost N, the letter N, like okay. N, Found Films. Lost okay. N Found Films. Lost and so Found. We want you to hold your nose and type in Bucket of Blood, 1959. You're going to find many copies of this film. We yeah. are looking for the one hosted by Lost, the letter N, Found Films. Lost and Found Films. Now, Mike, it's important because it's a good copy. It's colorized. There are other yeah. options out there. This one is really great. No ads. Okay. Listen, we like movies and we'll watch it any way we can, even if it's colorized. So, booey hooey on fooey. Uh, if you haven't seen this movie, you're in for a treat. A bucket of blood. Why don't we just call it like a lot of gross shit? I, I don't know. Gross shit. Listen, can we address the colorization? You are against colorization. My attitude, it's a mixed bag. I am against colorization. I think people should just suck in and watch a black and white movie. Mm -hmm. That said, uh, people do watch It's a Wonderful Life, and Violet <laughs> it has a violet dress. Isn't that cute? But I do think Ted Turner, with his mad rush to colorize films, made amends by also archiving and creating like a real <clears throat> collective source of films. Like A lot of stuff we watch, we, would, we watch because Ted Turner was able to get it. So I don't know. I, I'm a Ted Turner guy. I, I think he did just great with TCM, but colorization, I'm not a fan. Okay. But okay, can I tell you a story? I went to this hipster San Francisco uh, uh, tender knobby uh, detective store and they had videos and yeah. I read Maltese Falcon, right? That's the wrong uh -huh. neighborhood. And it was colorized. And I said, that was a colorized version. He goes, I knew that. I thought you knew that too. I thought you wanted to watch the color, read the colorized version. Uh -huh. Well, okay, let me speak to it, right? I'm yes. with you about it's bad. But at the same time, this podcast is like to attract the eye. It's pretty right. in its color. And we do people talk over are the lame and don't watch black and white films very often. They're lame. Okay. So we got to cast a wide net. <laughs> we do talk over the film. So it's not like we're not adding to the film ourselves. You're right, so. of course. Yes. That's right. 
Okay, sounds good. So let us hold our collective nose. Now you say, Mike, this is a lot of information. Bucket of Blood, 1959, Lost and Found Films. Bills. It's going to take me a second to hit play and hit pause and move the timer to zero, zero, zero. Give me some time. Okay, dude, relax. Carl? Yeah. Take it away with the Celebrity, celebrity Comedian celebrity. Countdown. Take it away. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of Celebrity Comedian Countdown, this time with Dana Marie. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you for me. Now, Dana, we know each other out there on the comedy scene. We see each other at shows. We see each other at open mics. We see each other at open mics. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> we have friends in common, friends who are with us, friends who are not with us anymore, yes. right? Yes. So, how did you, would you say you're a Hudson Valley comedian? Is that fair? Yeah, that's fair to say. Okay. Yeah. So, how long have you been doing it and how did you get started? So, I've been doing it for three years. I started in 2019 and then... That is recent. Yeah, <laughs> recent. The pandemic happened and then I just came back to it in 2021. So, all together, I'd say three years. Three years. And there was the interruption of the pandemic. Did it really interrupt? Did you do Zoom shows and stuff? I did not. Right. I did not even try to do Zoom shows because I did Zoom classes. Mm -hmm. And they were so bad that I would never subject oh. myself to so you had a little experience. I had right. a little experience. Okay, I understand. So you really did have a chunk of a break of it. Four yeah. months, six months. Yeah, like seven something months. like that. Yeah. Seven months. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, you're glad you're back, right? I am glad I'm back. Okay. Now, part of your comedy involves your journey with cancer. Yes. Okay? And that it prominently features into it. So, tell us about it. You know. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly why I got into comedy. Was for after I got diagnosed ten years ago. I like went through a pretty serious round of treatment, a couple serious rounds of treatment, and then afterwards, I started. You started like turn into like a new person. Mm -hmm. So with well, that, you go through challenges, and you know you have to endure. I'm sure. Yeah, it's to you're a totally different person mm -hmm. with all the trauma that you've been through. Mm -hmm. So then, I like to turn that trauma into laughter. Mm -hmm. It's the best medicine, as they say. <laughs> so I um. And I also wanted to connect with people. I wanted to connect with people on something that was so serious that a lot of, ed, everyone has someone that they know that has cancer. Absolutely. So I think that talking about it openly and making jokes about it is something that is healing for me specifically. Mm -hmm. And I hope that it can be really healing for other people as well. That yeah. Is my goal. Well, I mean, it's like you said, it's, I mean, I wouldn't say like relatable comedy, but everybody does know somebody who's grappling with or has succumbed to, you know, like my father passed, you know, everybody knows. So it is very relatable. Now you got a, this is old man glasses. Everyone who watches the podcast already knows that. Um, you have a podcast that involves the journey with cancer and helping other people, right? Yes. Okay. It's called Still Positive. Yes. All right. Now wherever you get your podcast but you're pushing youtube right that's where yeah. you would like people to sub subscribe to you yeah yeah it's um it's a podcast where we talk to people with chronic illnesses or disabilities mm -hmm. and we just sort of like share each other's stories and sort of share you know treatments and things that right. we're going through because as soon as you start with a chronic illness it sort of can spiral into like many chronic illnesses so learning about what other people are going through is something that I really connect with. Sounds like you could really learn from it. Yeah. And there's so many people that when they first get diagnosed with things like this, they have no idea and they're just like searching. This connects them. For something. People. Yeah. And like finding information for themselves on like what is what I'm looking at here. Because the doctors will tell you the diagnosis, they'll give you all the like bones of it. But then uh -huh. afterwards, you're like, well, what does this mean? <laughs> right, <laughs> like, right. You've been given a bunch of facts, not like an executive summary. <laughs> What's going to happen to me? <laughs> okay, well, that sounds like a great forum, this podcast, but it's not comedy. Now, if we want to see comedy, yes. okay, before we get to this countdown. I'm so sorry, love. Are you just wanted to go? Shall I leave that in? We'll find out in the final cut. So... That podcast sounds like an excellent forum, but it doesn't sound like comedy. So where can people find you, Dana Marie, out there? On the internet, on uh, social media especially? Where do we get, see what you're up to, see yeah. your shows, what are you doing? Yeah, so my Instagram is five underscores, sorry about that. What? Five underscores Dana Marie, Dana with a Y, it's phonetic. 
a lot of a lot of things. But it's five underscores Dan Murray. I usually post my shows that are coming up on there. I have yeah. one on Thursday at the Cine Winery in uh, whatever. But uh, I also have some shows coming up. Shall I leave that in? We'll find out in the final cut. Getting all this Mike Spiegelman. All right, now. Everybody at home is poised to watch this film at the exact same time as we do here in the studio. So everyone at home has got to press play at the exact same time we do here in the studio. So why don't you go ahead, Dana Marie, and give us that celebrity comedian countdown. Ready? Three, two, one, go! Thank you, celebrity comedian, for that. Are you American or are you international? Are you American or are you international? I will talk to you of art. Well, there is nothing talk else to talk art. about. Well, there is now, nothing else. You remember Life is a hobo. Yes, right. The, the florist owner from Little Shop of Horrors. Here's Dick Miller. Yes. Now, for the first time, you know, first time I saw this film, I thought this guy was Mel Well. I thought this guy was Mr. was Gravis Mushnick. Oh. You see why? Well, he has uh, that lick, and he's kind of hunched over like him. Yep. But he has the recognize body. You didn't say, hey, that's the guy from Little Shop of Horror who eats flowers? Dick Miller? I would have. I totally know Dick Miller already, though, so I didn't. Oh, you're, you're talking about the, the beatnik up there. Yeah, the beatnik up there. You remember Mr. Uh, yeah, I remember listening. It's not him? It's not. And I saw it no, the whole well, that's first right. time I saw it. Now, do you remember Aubrey, Audrey? Yes. Audrey won, right? This right. other actress, I totally thought, look, there's Mel Mushnick, right? It looks like Mushnick. Oh, he's got some good eyeliner going on. Oh, it's the colorization, damn you! <laughs> Turner. He wrote this poem, this actor. This actor's real name is Julian Burton. He wrote this, uh, this, this reminds me of the movie, So I Married an Axe Murderer, which starts off at Vesuvio's or a co yeah. stylized coffee shop around the corner in North Beach. And it's, it has Mike Myers' uh, thing. What's that? Oh, man. I remember Whoa, that. Oh, man. Yeah. But it starts off with the history of a cappuccino as it goes through this 90s cafe. It's really uh -huh. cute. Yeah. You know, Roger Corman, I watched a documentary called That Guy, Dick Miller. Yeah. And he basically said, hey, well, let's go to a beatnik uh, coffee shop. Well, and yeah. Then, the research for this film was on the Sunset Strip at all of these beatnik coffee houses. They just, the, he and Charles, the writer, Charles Griffith, they just Charles went Griffith. there, yeah, and got drunk. Interesting. Like, how many times, like, it's like, so you went to a coffee shop, and then you're like, now I could write coffee shop the movie? <laughs> no, he, Corman was part of the beat. Uh, let me, he's, I got a quote here from him about it. Uh, as, he's not a beatnik, really. Here it is. Uh, by the way, look at Dick Miller now. He is a bus boy and he's timid and frail. It's like he got damaged in life. Okay, right. that's his persona. The guy up there on the stage is pontificating poetry. Yay. Oh, is it Mike, my turn yet? Am I next on the list? Right. It's an open mic. It really is, Mike. It's an open mic. Okay. Uh -oh, why is it get on the stage? Oh, the show's over. He's going like, don't fuck around with the guests. Get going. Hey. <laughs> That's Leonard. Now, look, there's Aubrey. Audrey. Oh. Audrey. You know, the documentary, Audrey and Dick Miller are in tons of movies. Because at one point, I think I was married to her. Like look at the talk Romans. show host, by the way. Oh, all right. Oh, we'll get back to him. Like they were married? Yeah, so in the movie Gremlins, Dick Miller's wife is Audrey. Mm. Right, right, right. And there's a bunch of films he was saying. I got to the point where I just figured I was married to her. <laughs> yeah. Well, I w so I watched this film thinking I was watching Mushnick and Audrey, right? right? And I wasn't at all. Roger Corman said this in 2016. I, being a young director and knowing lots of young directors, writers, hung out with a group that could be considered vaguely beatnik. Now, these beatniks predate the hippies, okay? But... 
it's similar. Uh, yeah. I was not a beatnik. However, when we made Bucket of Blood, the beat scene was more or less at its peak. A Bucket of Blood was ultimately an affectionate, affectionate satire on a movement that was soon to be replaced by the hippie generation. Yeah, that's true. And, you know, then even in the documentary, it ties, connects the dots to the movie The Trip. Right. Where it was based, which Dick Miller was also in, where he was just basically, well, you know, I, I decided to take acid and make a movie <laughs> about my experience. Now we're finding out that this guy isn't really a beatnik. He's an undercover cop. Oh, jeez. Now a, let's hear some good... Dick yeah. Miller, okay? Meek Bring Miller. on a multitude with a multitude of fishes. Feed them to the fishes for liver oil to nourish the artist. <laughs> that was word for word. Repeating Maxwell's poem. You mean you don't remember your own poem? Listen. I refuse to say anything twice. Repetition is death. Repetition oh, is death. He's not going to say anything twice. Something. You are reliving a moment, wasting it, severing it from the other end of your life. I believe only in new impressions, new stimuli, new life. I thought you believed that life is an obscure hobo bumming a ride on a I do believe that <laughs> I also believe creative living. <laughs> to be uncreative, you might as well be in your grave or in the army. <laughs> you tried to draft me once. Yeah? I couldn't pass the test. Couldn't pass the test. See, why are you fucking around? <laughs> that table's to bust. Yeah, right. Here he comes. Move it over like a mid manager. Le Leonard's oh, watching God. you. Walter has a Listen, I don't want to tell you how to do your job, but I know I couldn't help but notice you didn't get to the other tables. Now she doesn't look like Audrey to me at all. Okay, we cut away from her. Listen, I don't want you to lose your job, but chop, chop! Oh, we always say, when we see like a, a, a nightclub and a, and a movie, is it a yeah. real set or is it this a real This is play? real. This is real. This is real? This is a set? Oh, yes, you're right. It's a set. What I mean is, like, we talk about the myth of the nightclub in the 40s, yeah. the myth of the punk club in the 80s. Right. This was real. They It was a coffee house, essentially, and there were a bunch of hippie kind of beatniks in it. My These second are... question? Go ahead. Where do I sign up? Yeah, oh, you just come... Yeah, where's the list? You just come and, yeah, get on the list. I'm Creatures from the bold beyond that of the afterlife of matter itself. I can just write these poems. Just wing it. I'm going to snap. I'll snap during the poetry, and then when you say a zinger, I'll go. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. We're missing a lot of the beatnik cool stuff here. Okay, so we've met really cool people and artists, and also we met a wimpy ass uh, busboy. Right. Now, he's gawking at two people kissing, not understanding that he's being inappropriate. He's quirky. Now, next thing you know, they want me to put my pants up. <laughs> Whoa, he can't Whoa. even kick the can. He can't oh my God, even... he died, Carl. He kicked the can. <laughs> he did die. Uh, 90, where was it? Oh... Uh... It was after the documentary. You were pretty old in that. 2019, 2019. So he made it a long time. He missed the pandemic, poor guy. Now, here is uh, the grandma from last time, Myrtle Vale. Oh, so this is so the, the, the this is considered a trilogy. This movie came first. We had watched yes. uh, Little Shop of Horrors, which is second. And then there was some kind of like underwater what, monster thing. Yes, exactly. Third. But it was connected by the humor, the quickness, and that it was a uh, collaboration between Charles Griffin, the, the screenwriter, and Corman exactly. producing and directing. Exactly right. So he comes home and basically we learn that he's, you know, he lives alone and his landlady's all concerned. When, were, when did you eat last? Oh, yeah, that's back when landladies in L.A. were like, listen, tenant, um, I'm concerned about your health. Yeah, that's right, because I want you to pay. Uh, let me just... Oh, look at it. That's called a tin can opener. God, that's so elaborate. Just to open a slits. <laughs> oh, look, now he's got some... That's some serious pot he's got. I forget what I was looking up. We were talking about something. I was going to look it up. Can I tell you something stupid I learned from the documentary? Yes, please. His name, Walter Paisley, this character's name, 
has haunted this actor in all the movies he's done. He's done over 200 movies, right? Right, exactly. But he, because it was, he did like 10 Corman movies, the guys in, you know, American International or whatever, New Line, or whatever, whatever the, the, the Corman company was in the 70s, yeah. they started hiring uh, Dick, Dick Miller again. I just watched him in, some, in uh, Hollywood Boulevard from, from the 70s. And they in that movie, Hollywood Boulevard, he played Walter Paisley. Walter Paisley, the same name. Same name. And they even had a prop. And in the movie, he showed it on, off it on his wall where it said proprietor Walter Paisley. Walter, <laughs> for several movies, like After Hours, he's named Walter. If you ever watch a Dick Miller movie, see what name he has. In several yeah, movies, like he's him. named uh, Walter Paisley. In fact, this last movie from 2019, he was wrapped by Walter Paisley. Listen, I got to put up the sound. Okay. We hear a cat. Oh. What is well, it? Venus Spiegelman? What is it? Venus Spiegelman, that's my old black cat. This is a painting. Now look, he's trying to make us he's trying to be a sculpture. Sculptor. Oh my god, is that what happened to my cat Venus? <laughs> yes. Not yet. Not yet. There's the ears. Those are eyes. There's honey lips. Sparkling eyes. Okay. Oh, you need some potato head uh, in your hat and, and ears. <laughs> That's right. You could just pluck it in. Oh. Listen to the cat. That the darn cat. He's in distress. What's cat's up? I mean, what's up, cat? Uh oh. The difference of a different pot than we saw before, but that doesn't matter. Yeah, you, the last one was more of a hybrid. Now look how he hit his head. I think that was on purpose and not like a. Frankie, shut up! He got oh, stuck in the head? wall. Why'd you get yourself stuck in a wall. <laughs> I hate that. Yeah, I hate when the cat gets stuck in the wall. I'm like, why don't you die and rot already? This I, mean, I would night, never say that. Hey, Watch, Mike. It's so fake. Look. It's right through the wall. Now he stabbed the cat. This is like Hamlet. Frankie? <laughs> is it? Yeah. He thought that behind the curtain there was a, a Oh, right. Cat. Right. Yeah. This is like Hamlet. Now watch. The wall will be cut out already. Watch. See how it's already Oh, yeah. Cut right. Out. Did he pull the, wo the wall right around the knife? Yes. <laughs> now, oh. oh, my poor stuffed animal. Look how it's rock hard like it has rigor mortis after one stab. Carl, I can confirm from stuffed and Does the stuffed animal get stabbed in the wall? Yeah. And... So these references to Dick Miller being like Walter Paisley are all over. Like The Howling, 1981. Twilight Zone movie, 1983. Chopping oh. Mall in 86. That's right. Chopping Mall. You already well, you know, mentioned uh, Hollywood Boulevard, and like you said, if his if his last name isn't Paisley, okay, first of ten roles where Dick Miller's character's last name is Paisley, or his first name is Walter, or both. Crazy. So we were doing all the same Corman movies. He did a bunch no. of Corman movies up front. Yes, and then he, he was associated, of course, with Joe Dante, who. Put Dick Miller in every one of his films, including Burying the X from, 19, mm -hmm. from 2014. He was really old in that movie, Dick Miller, but he was in it. Yeah, his press photo when he comes up on IMDb is that time. Old guy? Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what's weird is that he has this tattoo. I saw it in Hollywood Boulevard, and he shows it in the documentary. And obviously the 70s and 2010s, uh, it's like that cool age soldier tattoo, you know. Well, it's a World War II tattoo. On trucking. Yeah, no, it's it's a naked lady, and he, he points to his wife, who he had married for, for for decades. But after the tattoo, he goes, "Yeah, this is Elaine right here." You know? <laughs> <laughs> is this uh? So he killed the cat by mistake. No, it wasn't by mistake. He stabbed him in the wall. Well, it was by mistake. He was going to cut the wall to release the cat. And I felt this paw, this dog paw, <laughs> pushing my head through the wall. I didn't know what happened. I was out of call. Bark, bark. Bark. Quiet, Spot. 
He's stuck in the wall. Bark, bark, knife. Okay, I'll get the knife. <laughs> What's that, Lassie? You want me to stab him? I thought bark, I just wanted bark. to cut around. Okay. Now look, there's Audrey by the it is an Audrey as I see her. Her name in this is um Carla. Look at it's inappropriate to have Carla's uh watching. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Now look, the internet swears in the bottom right will see the boom mic shadow. I never okay. see it. Keep watching the bottom right. Okay, what he did is he took clay and he put it over his cat. He just perfectly <laughs> shaped the, to the cat. And of course, they're just going to think he's a sculptor. I don't see a boom mic. Do you see a boom mic? No, maybe it's colorized. Oh. Do you see a boom comma Michael, like Mike? Yeah. I Do you hear a boom comma Mike? <laughs> boom. I see no boom, Carl. I hear no boom, Carl. <laughs> The yellow dog. Do you think? No, boom. Okay, so they're like, holy shit, this is really fucking good, you know? And, of course, okay. uh, Leonard's being judgmental, but but uh, Carla here is genuine, you know? it It's a really good work. Now, look at it, Mike. Do you really okay. think that's the most magnificent thing you've ever seen? I, I mean, I just checked. Does the cat get stabbed and covered in plaster.com? And it says yes. And it says uh, yes. It's in the script. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll put it in the corner of it's the It's ugly. So, it's, you know, this is a kind of a jarring movie because it, it's, he has a cat with a knife in it. Maybe so. They call this a slasher film, but I really don't think it's appropriate. Well, because he slashed a cat? Well, he never... No, they just call it, like, um, one of the first slasher movies ever made, albeit a com comedic and not very serious slasher. But the thing is, he never slashes anybody. Well, he kills for his art, right? Is that what it's going to happen? Yes, Ooh, that five deaths, including the cat. Right, because cats are people too. Cats are people too. They even have their own Facebook page, right, Venus? Meow. A, don't say yes to the man. Yes, yes, that's <laughs> correct, Carl. I'm not <laughs> under my cat's control at all. <laughs> crazy. That's crazy, man. It's like he stabbed the cat and then put plaster around it. Me, man. Mike, is it hanging? What? How's it hanging? <laughs> oh, good. How are you? He likes my cat. Get to work. Get to oh, work. Hanging, bitch. I don't see a boom, Carl. <laughs> yeah, that's over. Come here, Walter. Now, I got a two box. we've now had our inciting incident, and things are going to change for Walter starting now. How'd you do it, Walter? Fine. Just put some clay and fix it up. Attention. Attention. Listen, oh, listen. I will pontificate. I am sure you noticed on your right a small clay figure. And assume this transfixed effigy to be the work of a master sculptor. Indeed, you are right! Indeed, so it is. That master sculptor is in our midst. Whoa! He's in our midst. It's so funny. Our very own busboy, whose hands of genius have been carrying away the empty cups of your frustration. Hands of genius! Mark well this lad. His is the silent voice of creation. Whoa! But in the dark, rich soil of humility, he blossoms as the hope of our nearly sterile century. He does not. He doesn't do. Bring me an espresso, Walter. Oh, zing. Man, you are in. Oh, Walter, it was yeah, wonderful. Yeah. You're the greatest uh, ever. That was such a great speech that he gave about you. Hey, let's crowd around the guy who got a speech. Now, here comes talk show host again. What do you, so do you, what talk show host was he doing? Well, he did, okay, here he is. Um, he did Tattletales. <laughs> he did oh. Super Password. He did, did Wink uh, or Draw. Okay, so is, he's not Wink Warnendale. He's not, well, right. yes. All okay. right. Uh, he's Bert Convy. Oh. And 
Look, he was an actor. He he was all over TV and everything. He was a singer, but he got fame as a talk show host and a panelist. Now, look, this guy got picked up by the Phillies when he was 17 years old. That's pretty cool. And he right. played like minor league baseball for two years. Um, also, he was in this band called The Cheers in 1950, and they had a top 10 hit. The uh, was hit it about every, everybody yeah. knows your name. <laughs> 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 right cheers it, it's um black check out the name of the song black denim trousers and motorcycle boots <coughs> listen to this i dug it my cat yeah, she's in love the with, wow. with walter like what do you think i've ever seen like we can think done something to me something deep down inside of my prana <laughs> Oh, I want to be with you. Let's do it. Right there in the coffee shop? Like right, I'm right there in the coffee you, shop. And I want to be warm by it. Gee, that's nice of you, Naolia. Yeah. Walter, take me, Naolia. Away. take me away to some cool blue place. <laughs> Gas me. I can't. I gotta this go home. This is troll when she was... Oh, and I'll go home with you. Oh, no, Mrs. Swicked wouldn't like that. She's my landlady. Isn't there anything I can do for you? The game show host loves it. so, Naolia. Walter, I can't let you just split like this. I've got to do something. I've got to contribute. She's got to contribute, Mike. You don't have to do anything. Wait. Wait, there is one thing I can do. One little thing. Don't leave, Walter. Okay. I want to give you something. Don't leave, Walter. Something that will make you remember me. Slow down, Walter. We still got 10 more minutes to fill. Now, this actress's last name is Burton, Jean Burton, just like our Maxwell, you know, the pontificator, Julian Burton. So I right. searched law, high and low for them like that. I just thought, oh, it's his wife or something. Nope, no relation, no. Okay, now, right. but Naomi, her name isn't Naomi, Naola. And also, the actress's name is Jean, but it's J H E A N. Isn't that interesting? J H E A N. H E I N. E I N? No. Yeah. It's Jean, like J E A N, but the H is in the middle there. J H E A N. Oh. Okay, now, what Niola gave him is heroin. That's what she gave him heroin. And talk show host is an undercover cop. That's right. That's right. He now, was the host of the giveaway was a show. Uh, people are narking. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he killed the cat by mistake. Okay, yes. he is going to now have a second victim, and again, it's kind of self defensey and he's like a weirdo, so he freaks out. Let's Little listen. Shop was next. He said in the documentary, I didn't want to be typecast. You know, he was not typecast, but he didn't. He, I already did that role. He, there was no sequels back then, and I didn't want to do the same thing again. Of course, and, yeah. Uh, and he gave it, and Jonathan Hayes is in the documentary. Old Jonathan Hayes, his best buddy. Yeah. From Little Shop. You know, he does say what you told me last week, which was that he, he gave the role to, he recommended Jonathan Hayes and it, Jackie. Um, he recommend Jonathan Hayes recommended uh, Charles Charles Griffin as a writer to Corman. Cool. Okay, let's listen. I also saw that chick like this on you. Oh, that was Naolia. She's a nice girl. She's kind of strange though. I guess she figures I get headaches or something. Okay, Walter, who's your connection? Connection. Connection. Yeah, connection. Who do you score from? Yeah, come on! I got you red-handed. You're under arrest. That's yeah, really heroin. See. What how's it colorized? Is it black tar or <laughs> what? What nothing? It's Chinese. It looks like white pills to me. Isn't heroin white? Sure, oh, girl. Cop. <laughs> you're not cool. You're not you're not one of the cool kids. <laughs> you don't even Look, know what heroin looks like. I am. I have the same hair as Dick Miller. If I cool. said to you, can I give you smack? You'd say yes, and I would go. And I'll smack you back. <laughs> oh, smack. cop gun. 
Prop gun. Prop gun. Prop gun. Now look, <laughs> you do not threaten uh, a guy with the frying pan. Why? Because he will go bong. Oh my God, he got ketchup all over his pan. Now we don't see him on the floor, do we? Then lady oh, this is the writer's grandmother. She was the flapper you told me last week. She's she a radio was, flapper. Uh, yeah, she was never a flapper, but on radio, yeah, there was a soap opera that she was a big part of called Myrtle and Marge or some crap. I forget. It's not in front of me. And she wasn't, she played an old retired flapper. Um, let me just see if I can find her here. Um, here she is. It was called Mert and Marge. Maybe that is what I said. She's yeah. from Hawthorne, New Jersey. Shout out. Shout out. Um, she was what on the radio you? from 32 to 46, and that was her fame, because you could be famous from the radio back then. 32 to 46? Um, yes. That's a good chunk of change. Yeah, oh. that is. And, and then her success went away. She tried to revive it a million times. These Corman films are part of that. The first yes. film that her grandson ever wrote, you know, Charles Griffin was like another, okay, here's where we get buck, uh, another thing for Myrtle and March. Here's where we get bucket of blood from, but is it a bucket or like a saucepan? It's a spaghetti pan. Maybe he's making bucket of sauce. Isn't it too low for, it's wide enough for a spaghetti pan. No, that could be a spaghetti pan. No, you know what? I would definitely, that's definitely on my bucket of blood list. <laughs> now, this movie is incorrectly named because right now it will go away. This bucket of blood will never see it again. It doesn't get filled up. It's they oh, shouldn't. What it. They just exploited it. <laughs> they yeah. exploited the bucket. <laughs> <laughs> that bucket gets no residuals. No. Oh, he is talking is himself. He's figuring out now. I could do it again. You just took some clay and fixed it up. You just took some clay, you know, with the cat. Yeah. Go home and make something, Walter. You hear the dripping of the blood in the Get background? Up. Yeah. Drip, drip, drip. The sax playing. Shut up, saxophone player. You he heard. But I haven't got another cat. But you've got a cop. Now this cop's calling up, going, no, we haven't seen him. Nobody knows where he is. No, you know what? I checked match game AM and PM. <laughs> I checked. I flipped through Game Show Network, AMC. I, I can't find him. I can't find him. Okay, now a discovery is going to be made. All right? Yeah. Leonard oh, is like dead cat. cat. He's admiring the cat. And then he's going to notice a little bit of fur coming out of it. Whoa, oh, hey. Cat crack. Cataract. Oh, cat, cat crack. don't crack. Did he land on his feet? <laughs> he's not a real cat. Look, fur. He is a real cat. Holy shit. Oh, holy shit. What a psycho. Yes. What a psycho. Dick what a proto man. slasher. Albeit in a comedy. An horror comedy. Oh, God forbid. Now, Leonard knows the secret, but the thing is, even though he's down on Walter, you're the bus boy. Let's go. Chop, chop. He still likes the guy, and he feels bad for him that he's like such a uh, nerd. But they so he doesn't, he doesn't reveal. say anything. Yeah, he doesn't say anything. Oh, Look at that okay, Carl, now you're an Angelino. Where are we? We are in Venice Beach, California. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, because you grew up in Los Angeles. Right. This is Not Venice, Beach. Venice Beach. I don't know those cop cars. Now, this guy, he would go on to have a little bit of success. So they're singing about a convicted murderer, right? Yikes. This is perfect for the film. <clears throat> the guitar player and singer at the nightclub, Alex Hasselev who was soon to form the popular folk trio, The Limelighters, with Lewis Gottlieb and Glenn Yarbaugh. So I look them up and they are a thing, but I don't know. What's a limelighter? 
Yeah, it's L I M E, like the fruit. Right. And then L I T E R S, light, L I T E, light. Oh, lighter. lighter. I would say a lemon is a lot lighter than a lime. I would say that if you look at them floating in a cup together, the lime is, is a deeper. Okay, so now he's like, okay, let's see. Well, Isn't the artist? Here? He knows that it's a cat, a real cat. That's a big idea. Idea? Oh, and then he's going to show up with a new portrait, a, a cop, a life-size person. Okay, so he was going to, you know, he's terrified that it's a real cat, but now a guy wants to give him a hundred bucks for it. Right? So right. he doesn't just, what? 1959, that money. <laughs> yeah, actually, 1959 money. You know, usually I look that up, Mike, right? I didn't do it this time, but... I did look up on uh, Google, and in 1959, that was worth a hundred bucks. <laughs> yeah. Well, all right. I'll have to take Google's word for that. In 1959, hundred bucks was. I like the guy. So is he wearing like a a Rebs? You know, yeah, he's. Right? It, no, it's it's con like Confederate. Yeah. Crazy. What is it called? He's from the East. Uh, murdered man. Murdered man. He wrote. Anytime. Now look, look at Leonard's yeah, face because he knows he might have killed someone. Once it was called the third time Phyllis saw me, she exploded. Now what kind of a statue was that? I don't know. It was made out of driftwood and dipped in fluoric acid. It was very wild. What? Killing me. Corman just kills me. Beatniks. Nothing. Nothing at all. Nothing, food except that I might be standing next to a murderer. Or else, so they got wheat germ bagels. Too much. Is he trying to be shocking by wearing the Confederate uniform? Uh, he's trying to trigger you, Mike. No, yeah. they're beatniks, right? The one or, guy's wearing like a motorcycle cap. The other I guy's know. wearing like, I mean, it, they're just try, they're just trying to be cool. Okay, so now he's like, I will give you fucking two hundred dollars for the cat. I'll give you three hundred dollars for the cat. He goes, look, look, buddy, listen, I'll give you five hundred dollars. So then the guy's like, 500 fucking dollars. Let's see. Yeah. $300 for the cat? Now we're only at 300. I know I'm going out of my mind, but I've been collecting art pieces all over Europe for years. All over Europe? This all guy over Europe. Europe. He's got it. I want to buy How piece. he got to Venice Beach, I'll never know. I'm very sure that I get it, I'll pay you $500. Five hundred dollars look at his next time. Myrtle, hold my call. Did you say $500? <laughs> yeah, right. Hang up his old timey phone. Now, if right for five hundred dollars, if it was me, I'd be like, "Sir, do you know that this is nineteen fifty nine? Five hundred dollars." Okay, the cat said, "Bye." Right now, definitely. By the way, he will only ever give Walter fifty bucks. By the way. <laughs> Out of the 500? Yeah, because he said a guy wants to get a hundred buy the cat for a hundred dollars. So he just sticks to his story. Oh, I gotta tell you, there's a funny line Dick Miller says in Hollywood Boulevard. He's an agent and he goes, he's on the phone. He's like, What do you got? A donkey show? Any tap dances? Am I interested? Bring your ass up here. <laughs> okay, now we're going to see Murdered Man, his new. And watch how bad this guy Leonard acts. He's he's not doing a good job being an actor, I don't think. And I bet you he'd smack my face if he was here, because I'm so ballsy to say that. His name is Anthony Carbone. Anthony yeah, Carbone. He was all over low budget horror films of Roger Corman in this or in the late fifties, early sixties. He was once on The Big Valley, you know, a TV show. Oh, yeah, there he goes. There goes Leonard. So he's just not acting well. I think he's just like, I mean, if you're scared that somebody's a murderer, do you do this? Like, he's trying to contain himself from exploding out of his body. What is he doing? Yeah, oh. I hear you, man. He's doing something, right? He's well, yes, acting. he's doing something. Yes, he is acting. Oh, oh, oh. whoa! <laughs> it's and sick, man. The same. Like, yeah. 
Now, Murdered Man is pretty gross. Do you see its scar down its, its sure. forehead? Yeah. When I look at this person, I cannot believe I thought it was Audrey for a whole watching of the film. She does not look like Audrey. Look at that. Cracked in the middle. Right. This is a wonderful work. Yes. I love it. The way it's severed like a... <laughs> like a Are you okay, door. Leonard? Are you acting? I'll tell you. Yes. Well, you, you cover it up again, please, huh? Please. <laughs> so Leonard's gonna sell it. All this nonsense. Why do you want to hide it? Well, well, Leonard did something greedy with the cat, but he will not have the gumption to sell a role made. of. Yeah, he won't have the role of a money grubber in this film. We're we're past that scene and. Is he going to call the cops? Go on and murder? No. People are narking. <laughs> he goes, whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't come too close to me, bitch. It's going to be hot again. Well, it would take you years to make that many statues, but your work would be featured. It's a wonderful idea, Walter. It's the only way to get... He was right to decline Little Shop of Horrors after this film. Dick Miller? Yeah. Why? It's the same character. No way, man. You would you would think they would be a little Seymour would be a little slumpier. No, Seymour was a lovable fool, right? Right. Uh, Dick Miller in this thing is, a, or Walter Paisley is like <clears throat> a confused, insecure, and stupid man who's alone. Who's a loner. He's got he's got to have some history of damage. It, right. Another thing is they talk about this as if it's a comedy. It's all over the internet like this is a comedy. I'm not laughing. I think it's a drama. Now look, he's giving him 50 bucks for the cat. Faith in you, Walter. Gee, $50 for something I made. Now you're a professional. Right, not $250. No, 500. Well, oh, 500. Mm-hmm. You split it 50-50? Mm -hmm. Yes, that was the deal. So basically what he said is, Walter, we're not showing this at the cafe. What you've got to do is make a bunch of works and then we'll show you all at once, like at a gallery with uh, people that, you know, yay, for the yay. first time ever. Oh, hello, writer's grandma. Oh, shows up, landlord shows up right now. Whoa, look at that. Yeesh. She doesn't like it. Have a nice night. So that explains the smell. Okay, here this he goes. This guy's still on stage? Give him a light. Oh, yummy, yummy, yummy. I got love in my tummy. <laughs> Why you gotta be so rude? So rude. Don't you know I'm you human? You too. Too. Why you gotta be gotta so rude? Gotta be so rude. Gonna bury that girl. Walter will bury her anyway. Bury that girl. Bury her anyway. For a second exhibit. Walter Berry things. My, that's my second exhibit. See, like, is this comedic relief? It just seems like they're acting like... I'm gonna somebody this else. is a trauma. This is Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. <laughs> <laughs> no. They gotta tell... Weren't they school kids? College kids? They're Sunset Boulevard dropouts. Oh, here's uh -huh. the artist. Okay, now Walter's made 50 bucks. Oh, and that's 1950s money. So right. he's got to spend. He could spend five bucks and have a great night. That's what he's about to do. See, he's all cocky. 500 five cent comic books, please. That's right. We're going to make a cappuccino and a piece of papaya cheesecake and, and a bottle of Yugoslavian white wine. Whoa. Okay, Hello, Maxwell. How are you? How are you? He's one of the click now. So now you see he's starting to like fame. Now, when he killed the cat, it was a mistake. When he killed the cop, it was kind of a mistake. It was a panic-stricken self-defense. Panic, right. There was a gun out, right? So right. it was self-defense. Now we've got a cocky, cocky Walter. I'm a sculptor now. So... His next murder. It could be all these dudes. It would <laughs> no, but it will be homicide. It won't be manslaughter. It will be 
Now, this girl is an asshole, and we are set up to hate her so okay. that when she gets killed later, it's okay. We're still sympathetic to Walter. <clears throat> Why are we sitting with the bus boy? I'm a model, you know. I only charge $25 an hour. Which is outrageous. Would you like to do me? I just might. Never mind that. Huh? Walter's going to try free porn. What? Here you go again. You can't take my business. Did you hold his room. aunt? As a matter of fact, I was going to suggest to Walter that he try a female figure. As a change from the violent death thing. He really should, Walter. You know, yeah, why don't you line up, Walter? If you like, yeah. I'll be your model for free. Whoa! Not you. Man, what? if you're going to be an artist, you've got to do nudes. Nudes. Right, nudes. right. right yeah. Look, Maxwell Nobody thinks these people are beneath him. Nice. Look. Oh. Will you get out of here before we wind up in night court? Oh, let's change that. That's a good line. Sick of hearing about skulls. Right. Well, because don't they bust coffee shops and send you off to night court? The bus boy from the yellow door. The well, bus boy. What do you think you're talking about? Don't shout at me. I don't like you. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> asked you, Walter. Walter. What the fuck, uh, dude? A simple little farm boy, and the rest of us are all sophisticated beatniks. <laughs> That's all, man. Let's split. Everybody hates her. Yeah, man. And we're yeah. supposed to hate her too. So that when she dies, it's cool. It's cool. The better woman. Now, um, Carla says, you can do me for free. And she goes, oh, I couldn't do you, Carla, because, because Walter knows it means killing whoever he's going to do. He's just going to smear clay over the top of them. <laughs> Look at this. Steal coffee. Finger. Everybody hates her. What did I, like I say? You're a jerk. Alice? You're obnoxious. Oh, an idiot. obnoxious. He's just Alice. an idiot. It's interesting. Little Shop is, is, no, it was Skid Row. It was another Los Angeles film. It was Skid Row. It was another L.A. film for sure. Yeah. Cop. Oh, really? No, yeah, not this time. Good. It's Walter. It's a good disguise being Walter, right? <clears throat> right. Okay, so basically you know what's going to happen now. Okay, so maybe I'll tell you something. Um, Maxwell, right? When he showed up to the premiere, he showed up in a tuxedo and sandals. You'll see that throughout this whole film. He wears sandals. People thought he did it because he did it in the film, but the truth is he had swollen feet. Is that oh, that's great. I love it. I think okay. my character should wear sandals. Okay, Walter, that's fine. Let's be more of a jerk. Night. Oh, you're a jerk. You deserve to be strangled. Oh, so, so this is the turn. This is no longer self-defense. Right. He went right over to her apartment to kill her. Female figure, after all. Oh. Oh. I'd like you to pose for it. Remember what I said about my prize? You'll give me money. So that's it. They're gonna go. Okay. Um. Okay. That Anthony Carbone, who I was such a jerk to as an actor. Yeah. You see, he keeps on walking with his cane, limping. People just assumed he was hurt, and Roger Corman said, "I don't care. We're shooting." Right. But right. no. The guy did it on purpose to I actually don't him. like that cane. That got in the way and stuff. Yeah? Yeah, like they were passing something around and his cane was in the middle of it. Okay. I don't remember the scene. I just, I, of course, probably 10 minutes ago. Dick Miller really didn't like the low budget of this film. It, it, He thought that it didn't help it. It hurt it. And I agree with him. At the end of the film... Uh, I, I don't want to ruin it, even though I ruin everything. I already told you five people die. I told you she's going to die. Nobody watching this movie. Right. So I don't see a boom mic, Carl. I'm looking at the shadow. I Thank you. In the end, keep a lookout. Keep a lookout. In, the, in the end, um, they don't spend money on the ending, and it really hurts it. It really hurts it. You know, Little Shop of Horrors had a really anticlimactic ending. It was yeah. just paper mache pictures of people's bad pictures of people's faces. Popped That's right. Them. Yeah. And okay, look, full backle nudity. Wow. 
Colorized. Um, he, yeah. Um, in the end of, of Little House, he gets into the plant with a knife, okay? But we never see it. We never see him getting eaten and killing the plant at the same time. And right. in the very end of the film, when we see Walter's face, we don't know that the plant is dead. Look, strangling. I'm strangling you with the scarf that couldn't strangle you. Okay. Hey, guys, you should check out my new thing. Whatever happened to that mean girl, Alice? <laughs> That's right. Listen, uh, Dick Miller was only the lead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, you were, you were obnoxious. He's obnoxious. He didn't have to kill her. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Obnoxious people, like, deserve a good bitch slap. They don't deserve sure, to at die. Most, at most a bit slow. Look, look at the scarf he's wearing. It's hers. It's, it's hers, yeah. You're obnoxious, Alice. Um, though Dick Miller is a recognizable veteran actor and has appeared in well over 100 movies, this film is one of only three that he has the starring role. Do you, do you have to list the other two? Yeah, they're like 50s BS ones. Oh, rock and roll all night. The, the right? His wife said that he's more like, he's not like Walter Paisley. He's more like the character from Rock All Night. And they, they showed that one. It looked pretty good. It Yeah, it's called Rock All Night. Exactly right. And he is a, so that's more like his real life self. She's, yeah. She's no, a, the other one's War of the Satellites, 1958. War of the Satellites. Yeah, that was actually what I think. Uh, got him uh, Corman's attention, or I don't know, something like that. That's Someone's what attention got called. He might have been that might have been a Corman movie. So I'll be quiet on that. <laughs> See how she's looking up. Yeah, because that's how she got stabbed. So he plastered her like her body. Yeah, that's all he did from all of them. Now you see that kiss. Yeah. Walter will take something, take that very seriously. He's going to fall for Carla if he hasn't already. They they bring up Jack Nicholson because Nicholson was in Little Shop of Horrors and he was also in The Terror with this crazy Boris Carla from me that Dick Miller was in it. Right. And his wife's like, you know, he's not bitter, but you know, he because he he got to a point in his career where he didn't wasn't getting work. Well, okay. You know, and so to see like a guy like Nicholson make it big, he probably got burnt Huge. out of it. Yeah. But, that but then suddenly happen. he got tons of work. Okay, so right now Walter sits up there as a king. They're throwing a little party for him. And he's really being drunk and sad. He yeah, he's trying to be conceited, but he doesn't know how to do it. I know I'm, this is a compliment not to the writer, but to the actor, Dick Miller, really, more than anything else. He's the one who's letting us, you know, being with, uh, he's really, okay, let's just turn it on. Sure. I'll shut up. Paisley is born. Duncan knows. Tuesday, just sort of make that knows. quote, that's interesting. But this, this photo is all, always used as a promotion, him sitting for lonely sad as the king. king. Yeah. Case and all such things with phone, we know that Walter Paisley is born. Ring rubber bells, beat cotton gongs, strike silken cymbals, gongs, play rubber bells, bells, the cats and cans, and you and I, and all such things with souls. We shall he hear that to Walter keep it down. Paisley <laughs> is born. And the oh, undercover cop. He's like, This Walter is fucking stupid. Is he's a black hat. I don't think he's a cop. Oh, yes. You saw him on the phone. Marvelous, darling. Marvelous. Man, like that was the greatest gas I ever heard. The Crazy. greatest gas I ever heard. Didn't you hear him? No, man. I'm too far out. Far out means high. Is it really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, that well you're not Maxwell. one of the hip guys like so, me. Uh, I mean, you, you should come every... down to uh, 1958 and hang with me and the boys. We, uh... We'll go to Sunset Boulevard where it's filled with coffee houses. Oh, it's the cat's meow. Yeah. Oh, now, that's, that's a joke because that's earlier. Yeah, that, that means we went too far back. Got to go a little forward. 
no, no, your present is our past. We need to get to the future, which is our past. Kill the divergent timeline. <laughs> Kill it. Drunk ass bitch. You He's should slow down. Is it crazy that like the jukebox could have been Fonzie's jukebox from the mid fifties? <laughs> well, it's very apropos. You saw those fifties police cars. They look ridiculously bubbly. Sure. It is the fifties right now. It's the very last second of the fifties, but. But I mean, you also had like, you know, easy comics and man magazine and all the kind of smart stuff on TV and some movies. So like he's definitely in the zeitgeist. His film, you know, being this black is kind of this humor is funny. I mean, it was an early, early version of it. Look at how drunk he is. Yeah. Well, here, let's see here a little yeah, bit. Yeah, let's hear one. Oh, speech is over. Oh, wait, wait more. The bard speaks. Alley cats and garbage cans, they know that Walter Paisley is born. He's just now like. This is a voiceover? Yeah, he's, he's like. Um, he's patting himself on the back. Next, Walter. What are you gonna do next? What are you gonna do next, Walter? How you call that? Okay, now we had an accident with the cat. We had self-defense with the cop. We had murdering a jerk. Now we have murdering a random nobody. So he is degenerated now. Now, the reason he wants to do it is they love him. He needs to do it again, or they're going to forget, or they'll think it's a fluke. He needs another statue. God damn it, right now. That's crazy. That is crazy, man. Would I? Now... American International Pictures, AIP, they came to him in the middle of 59 and said, Corman, we are in trouble. And he goes, yeah. And he goes, okay, this is the random killing. He goes, we need you to do a movie in five days and we'll give you 50 grand. He's like, oh, that sounds great, boss. Yeah, that's not a problem. Yeah, handshake. So he didn't want to do a straight horror film. Um so it was Charles Griffin. Uh, it was really Griffin and him who got together and they came up with this. Watch, he gets his head sliced off here. Gross. Oh, yeah. where's the colorized blood? Exactly. There it is in the box. Now, who knows? What's in the better, box? Who knows better than anyone but our bad actor that Walter kills people? Maybe no. he's. A, I haven't really watched this movie in a long time, but maybe. He, yeah, no, you're right. His acting's not that great. I'm listen, not gonna... listen. Read about the man who got cut in half. Nope. Extra, extra. You often talk about gilding the lily, right? You right. have a guy going extra, extra. Guy gets killed in your plot of your movie. <laughs> it's a little bit. A little bit. Oh my but god. That's the horror. The guy says it and he what does he show up ahead? He's acting, 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 acting. Put it back, put it down. I'm falling into a vortex of acting. <laughs> um they just they developed the idea and basic outline of the film in one day. Uh the Genesis was an evening Griffith spent drifting around with the beatnik coffee houses on the sunset strip with Corman, observing the scene, tossing ideas, reactions back and forth until we had a basic story. And also they knew this film called The Mystery of the Max Wax Museum. It was with Vincent Price, Mystery of the Max Wax Museum. And of course you can guess they he put dead people in wax. Right. Was that the 3D movie? I don't think so. I it think was because so, it starts off with you know those ping pong, those plastic balls on a paddle. But it's 1932. Oh, 32. Oh, you're right. Okay. It can't. But if no, it was 32, the... I think of the House of Wax. Oh, the House of Wax. Look, he's in the tuxedo and the sandals. Right. I did not, but I'm going anyway, not to drink his champagne, but to see Walter's trial. Now After that, tonight. Hi, Maxwell. I won't say good luck, Walter. 
Why not? Why not? It would imply you could not succeed on your ability alone. Ridiculous. Okay, so tonight is a big show of all his um, statues at the coffee house. And oh, yeah. yeah, and and Leonard, Leonard sort of put this together. I don't understand why. Like, it's a flaw in the film. He, he found out that this guy is killing, 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 killing. So he says, I'll tell you what, let's do a show tonight at the club. I don't get why. Yeah, no, right. He should have called the cops or at least figured out one of the patrons is a cop. Now hey, look what this you... jerk does with the ashes. Wow. Did you see I, it? Yeah, her request is a dump in a Disney World. <laughs> now... This is the scene in which, you know, Walter's like, do you love me? Will you marry me? You know, and, he, and she won't. Fistic. Of course I do. That means you like me. I like you very much, Walter. I, I, I thought you did. I can't how you kissed me the other night. Well, oh, I was just was kissing you. sculptor of the girl you knew sculpture. Didn't you? Carla, uh, I've been alone for a long time, and, and I know you've been alone because you never seem to go out with anybody, even though Leonard's always asking you to go out with him, and I just... What are Stop you in your head, Walter. What do you think I'm trying to say, girl? Will you murder me? Will I murder will you? you? Murder me? <laughs> Carla, oh. Walter, will you murder me? I, I don't want to make statues anymore. I, I want to get married to you. Look at Dick Miller's quivering lip. He's so good. How long have you been thinking about this, Walter? Oh, for, for a long time. Ever since you first came to work at the club. You were the only one who was ever nice to me. I didn't know you loved me until you kissed me. Ah, uh, I don't love you. A kiss is but a kiss. I do like you. Don't hurt his feelings. And I did kiss you. Let the murderer down easy. But, yeah. That was because of your work. There's more to being in love with someone than just that. There is? So you don't love me? You mean you don't love me? No. I'm afraid I mean, your hair's cool. But... But you gotta love me. Why do you think I made that statue of Alice? Walter, I'm sorry, but You I... just can't be sorry. I want to marry you. Now calm down, Walter, and let's go in there and... And then maybe when the show's over, we can talk about it. Well, tomorrow. I want to talk about it. Oh, boy. Yeah. Penguin yeah. Not He's not going to murder her right now, here. Thing, no. He doesn't really get mad at her. It's more Nobody like knows it's to immortalize her. Born. You'll see. Okay. Carla. Yes? Will you do one favor for me? Yes? Just about anything, Walter. Would you let me make a statue of you? Would you really like to? <laughs> That'd make me very happy. Yeah, to get murdered? Okay. <laughs> Would it's you a perfect like crime. You can take the body, plaster it, sell it at art. <laughs> at that, that coffee shop that's somehow open on, on Sunset. <laughs> Dying man, dead man, murdered man, murdered man. Murdered man. Okay, now... I just want to say that films like this, you know, we've heard of Grindhouse and all that, but this was very new. Cheap teen movies for drive-in markets. That's what they were. This was kind of before Grindhouse. Cheap right. teen movies before drive for newly. It was a new thing. It just started and it gave people like Corman a life. Yeah, they don't oh, care I about the quality. Just knock it out. Right. Totally. I agree. It's interesting, in Hollywood Boulevard, they go to a drive-in, and one of the movies is The Terror, and they say, hey, Walter, that's you. He goes, yeah, I used to be an actor. Is that a joke? What? What? So in the movie Sunset Boulevard, uh -huh. oh, no, Hollywood Boulevard, yeah. Dick Miller plays Walter Paisley, a, a talent agent. Oh, and okay. And they go see a drive-in movie, and <clears throat> they show a <laughs> Yeah, they show a Corman clip of him. And in the movie, he goes, oh, yeah, that's back when I was an actor. <laughs> Before I was an agent. If only I had 10% of everybody. In that. Now, look, look, in that movie. look, the losers came in the door. 
Hey guys, war's over. Man, we hey man. To make this he lost. Let's out. Out. Man. We got the bread. We're not open for business. This is an art exhibit. No bumps. Get out. Uh, that art is a bum, man. Yeah, he's so yeah. Out. Well, that's out. his problem. Whoa, right. man. Wait outside. Yeah, you wait outside. Come on, Corman needs you for the next movie. You are not invited. Bad Nicks. Okay, now, in this film, uh, according to the guy I continue to criticize as a bad actor, it had the spirit of having fun, and Corman realized that while making the film, and it helped him with other films he made, like Little Shop. Now, look, she will now discover uh, a finger, the pinky. Okay, so some oh, of the clay yeah. rubbed off, and there was a pinky under it. So now she realizes there are bodies in the oh, statue. Well, that's Alice. It's all right, Carla. Maxwell says it's all right. Let them become clay in his hands that he might mold them. Walter, you stay away from me. Don't you see, Carla? Yeah. I made them immortal. Immortal? Don't you see, I can do the same for you. Immortal. <laughs> So Art now, one exhibit. cat's out of the bag. This dude is a murderer, and he's oh, obviously chasing. Okay. Yeah. Now she will see it too. The paint, the finger, and she's gonna. Eee. You know. Now everybody knows. And even oh, Max yeah. will be like, Walter Paisley is a murderer. Also, why am I drinking coffee with dead bodies everywhere? Now, these guys have revealed themselves to be cop. This guy has revealed himself to be a cop. I'm chasing Carla down the street. He said, Carla, down the street. Now, they the door's not yellow. Place What's that? The yellow door. It's the yellow door, but they didn't yes. colorize it to be yellow. <laughs> well, maybe in real life it wasn't. <laughs> it's a choice you could make, right? They should right. have. Yeah, not as a director, but, you know, possibly a, a color, a colorizer can make the decision for you. Now, we are heading towards the end here. And again, in Corman-like fashion, it's a chase. Uh, that's what we saw in Little Shop. Right. And, okay, this other film, I never saw it. Uh, here it is. You're right, it's underwater, right? Creature from the Haunted Sea. Right, it's which a I never saw known to me. I don't, I don't think I've ever seen that one. Well, I don't think it's in the public domain. That's why we did this one in Little Shop. So, yeah, no, totally. <laughs> no, they're great films, and uh, no, no one's done these movies before. Here's something that I don't like about the film, but it's cool. What they know? They All of a sudden, be, uh, he starts hearing the voices of the people. He can't hide just because we're in clay and he isn't. That's weird. The clay people are talking to me. Go home, Walter. He won't know where else to go. Okay, so you hear what I'm saying, right? Like yeah. the whole film, he wasn't a psychotic or something. That's not why he killed. He killed to keep his statue, stature. He killed to keep his, you know, you for think the, it's the actual time, souls. It's the actual souls telling him this. Like maybe it's not in his head. Maybe it is the ghost. I don't know. Maybe you're right. Maybe it is the souls. It's not explained. Yeah. But that's what I mean. There was no preamble to. And like, how come if the landlord lady, if the landlord lady was like, my aunt, aunt Ether, Mer, you know, my aunt Mermel speaks to me when I, you know, when I was a girl, there was no setup that. I interrupted though. Go ahead. No, I was saying you're right. There's no setup, and also we just heard one guy. I wanted to hear Obnoxious Alice from you. Well, no, call we that heard a her. murder. We heard yeah, Alice. Was... Well, we're What's right now. Alice? We're hearing the soundtrack of Little Shop. Oh, right. You were saying that the composer just renamed it and gave it to Corman. Exactly. Fritz. Fritz. What's his name? Well, this came first, so he probably reused it for Little Shop yeah. or had reused it. Cellist Fritz Katz. This score was used in a total of seven films, including The Wasp Woman, Creature from the Haunted Sea. That's that third one in this trilogy. 
Every time Katz was called upon to write music for Corman, Katz sold the same score as if it was new music. What an ass. I, is he? I don't know. <laughs> Do you think maybe they just had to launder money? It, it is actually, you're right. It is an asshole thing to do. Don't know why Corman didn't notice. Okay, now he doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know what to do. So he's going to do something that's good about the film. He will now put himself in clay and he'll hang himself and die. He will immortalize himself. Let's hear. Okay. But the, they have no budget, so they don't put him in clay. You'll see. Here's what I'll do. I'm Dick Miller. I'll improvise this scene. I'll take a piece of rope, right? And then I'll <laughs> hang myself. Look at these. Yeah. It'll be bees knees, I tell you. This film calls for him to be a statue like his other ones. But he's not. Look at his hair. Watch this. <gasps> I had to do a shock face. <gasps> And roll him. Suppose he would have called it hanging man. Look at that. He just put a little clay. Kind of, yeah. Uninspired. Right. Repetition. Repetition is death. I know the end. Good hangout movie, huh? Carl, what'd you think of this movie? I enjoyed it. I think it was good. Yeah, it's like a good Twilight Zone movie. It's not too long. It's a, it's a good feature length film, 70 minutes or so. 77. No, I criticisms about the film i mean you just heard me talking about how ghosts show up or he's right. insane or something and also um the, well i forget right now this very second but i had a few criticisms right doesn't matter yeah. i still enjoyed the film from start to finish yeah and i always remember this movie as a scary film he kills people in cold blood and then yeah. you know passes it off to the art which is the best parody that's satire right there carl that's some good satire mm. Death oh, imitates ooh, art. Artie. Yeah, right? Death equals art. Mm -hmm. Art equals death. Uh, commerce, right? Yeah, man. Art is commerce, dude. That is so non-materialistic. But Dick Miller is great in this yeah. movie. He's so good in this movie. Yeah. All right. Well, I love it. Yeah, of course. Classic. That little shop. I've never seen the underwater film, but maybe one day I will. Yeah. Thank you, Charles Griffin. All right, Carl, wow, yeah. wow. Thank you so much, Carl, for watching this movie several times, getting this fantastic research, uh, guiding us through Bucket of Blood, 1959. Produced, written, produced, directed by Corman himself, Roger Corman with Dick Miller. I hope you enjoyed it. We will be back next Sunday at 2 p.m. on mutinyradio.fm. <laughs> you know, I've been hanging out here outside. I wish they let me in here at 2781. And uh, Carl, we'll be back next Sunday. We'll be back on YouTube and we'll be back on your podcast feed. So hope to see you then. Thanks. Bye. Let's watch a full length movie on YouTube with Mike Spiegelman. Let's watch a full length movie on YouTube. With my Spiegel man, it's been over one long year watching movies, bad, strange, and weird, commandeered by Michael. Hi, this is Carl. I'm Mike's friend. I, I wrote this song. My turn ons are French poodles, Chinese noodles, and, and German strudels. You should follow me on Twitter. It's Jokes to Carl. Uh, that's the French duh, not the uh, 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 duh, duh. Now let's watch a full length movie on YouTube with Michael.